From the scent of sizzling tomato and sausage permeating the air to the flattering mouthfeel of fried egg yolk bursting on the tongue, the full English breakfast offers an unrivaled sensory experience. This classic British morning meal conjures immediate familiarity, be it served on fine china in a stately manner or a chipped plate at the corner calf. Consisting of fried egg, bacon, baked beans, mushrooms, sausage, tomato, toast, and more, the full English has graced British tables for five centuries. From hearty to excessive, how did the English breakfast meal transition from nobility's morning feast to a working class staple across Britain over five centuries? Keep watching to find out, and, and before we head on to the video, hit that like and subscribe button. The origins of the full breakfast reach back to the early 15th century English gentry landowners who resided on country estates. The gentry fancied themselves guardians of a romanticized old English lifestyle, keeping alive the hospitality, cuisine, and customs of an idealized agrarian past. Lavish morning feasts were important events in the gentry calendar. As friends, extended family, and neighbors stopped by their stately country manors, the lords and ladies of the houses greeted guests with a magnificent spread of breakfast fare. What we now consider the standard full English first emerged from these grand morning meals. The early gentry breakfast was a true feast, more akin to a Christmas Day dinner to modern sensibilities. Baked fish, stewed fruits, roasted game meats, potted hams, blood sausage, smoked eel, oysters, bacon, kidney, pork pies, and more. The 15th century breakfast table overflowed with hearty proteins, vegetables, freshly baked manchet breads, and fruit tarts to sustain the guests. As friends and kin gathered to break the night's fast, the morning meal both demonstrated the household's hospitality and underscored its status through quality ingredients. The fare reflected the symbiosis between the landed elite and the farmers, fields, forests, and fisheries which sustained a state life. By mid-16th century, everyday rural English families incorporated a simpler version of the gentry morning meal into their daily routine. As laborers, craftsmen, merchants, and farmers started their working day shortly after dawn, wives and servants dished out small morning meals of leftovers, cheese, ale, bread, and eventually porridge. The Victorian era saw breakfast transformed into a formal social convention for England's surging middle class. As the 19th century unfolded and urbanization increased, a new wealthy bourgeois arose, no longer tied to agriculture or manor estates. Eager to claim the aristocracy's social status, these aspiring Victorians sought out markers of gentility. An elaborate morning meal in the gentry style became an opportunity to display sophistication and good taste. By mid-1800s, the full English breakfast was served in affluent homes and hotels across Britain. As railways further expanded domestic travel opportunities, railway pensions and dining cars introduced morning diners to the hearty English breakfast. Whether in Yorkshire country inns or London business hotels, restaurants enticed travelers with the beloved fare. The bustling growth of Victorian industry, commerce, and transport not only shuffled the breakfast menu, it transformed all of British society. New wealth flowed both from land rents and industrial capitalism. Greater social mobility shuffled people across England and weakened the insular village life which had defined Britain for centuries. This era refashioned Britain as an increasingly commercial, mobile, and urban society. Traditional roles and community ties, which once anchored people to a place, were severed. Yet as modernization and migrancy unrooted long-standing English customs, the full breakfast became a symbolic anchor of national tradition and familiarity for Britons in this societal sea change. By the late 1800s, the various regional interpretations also solidified. The Scottish full breakfast incorporated square sliced sausage and potato scones. Irish menus included soda breads, boxty pancakes, and white pudding. Welsh cooks added cockles, laver bread seaweed, and carefilly cheese to the morning spread. These local preferences testified to the sense of identity embedded within foodways. As railways and industry eroded localized customs once seeded in village life, Many sought connection through regional food specialities. The early 20th century delivered changes that further established the full English breakfast in the nation's culinary DNA. Britain's rising post-Victorian nationalism fixated on cultural traditions as expressions of Britishness and English exceptionalism. English folk songs, May Day dances, plowmen's lunches, and Sunday roasts joined the full English breakfast as touchstones for a newly imagined heritage. 
The interwar economic depression of the 1920s and 30s threatened the lavish dining practices which had defined Victorian and Edwardian bourgeois life for decades. Yet the full English breakfast itself was not threatened, for it had transitioned from upper-class extravagance into an affordable, hearty meal. Working-class Britons now sought out the beloved dish in their local transport cafes, pubs, tea shops, and cabmen's shelters. These bustling calves dished out traditional bacon, mushroom, sausage, and tomato breakfasts to sustain labor workers across Britain. The meal was rib-sticking, tasty, and offered blue-collar diners, a sense of home yiness outside cramped urban tenement quarters. This nationwide network of affordable, greasy spoon cafes played a vital role in cementing the full English as a national working-class dish by mid-20th century. Whether as miners in Yorkshire, factory workers in Birmingham, cab drivers in London, or shipyard roughnecks in Glasgow, toiling masses could start their day with a hot cuppa, fried bread, and the breakfast they loved most. Following the Second World War's years of deprivation, the full English breakfast emerged as a celebrated national tradition once more. Britain's post-war economic recovery allowed ration-weary diners to indulge in the hearty fare they had missed for years. Its popularity swelled between 1945 and 1970 as renewed prosperity brought a revival of lavish dining. The post-war era saw the full English breakfast reach its cultural zenith in tandem with growing nationalism and pride in Britain's cultural heritage. By mid-century, the meal had become a quintessential representation of Englishness, incorporated into radio shows, films, advertisements, and novels as shorthand for British. The coronation of young Queen Elizabeth II in 1953 sparked a new era of Anglophilia as the world looked to Britain with renewed enchantment. English recipes swept across the United States and British Commonwealth nations. From Canada to Australia, people sought a taste of Britain's food heritage. International branding campaigns like the Buy British Movement of the 1960s positioned the full English breakfast front and center to foreign importers. When global consumers thought of Great Britain, imagery of Big Ben and English Bobby policemen now joined the hearty sausage and beans breakfast in epitomizing Britain. By the 1960s, Modern convenience foods posed the first real challenge to the full breakfast's hundreds-year dominance over Britain's morning meal. As post-war consumerism and work cultures valued speed and modern home economics, quick new breakfast options entered British homes. Chilled orange juice concentrate, packaged cereals, instant coffee, and sweet toaster pastries offered swift morning convenience for busy working households. For young mod swinger urbanites weaned on counterculture rebellion rather than tradition, the fattening fry-up seemed old-fashioned compared to continental European breads, fruits, and yogurts. Immigration from Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean introduced new flavors and dishes to Britain as well over these decades. Curries, noodles, dumplings joined ranks with bangers and mash. Alongside the bacon and eggs, modern London diners could order roti flatbread, Jamaican aki saltfish, or Nigerian moin moin bean cakes. Some began questioning if the heavy full breakfast had relevance within frenetic modern lifestyles. As nutrition science demonized fat, eggs, and meat for new generations, the rib-sticking meal seemed excessive, old-fashioned, and too time-consuming to prepare for rushed city dwellers. The hearty fare was best suited to manual jobs rather than white-collar office work. By the 1970s, Britain's declining economy and fickle food fads seemed to threaten the full English breakfast more than ever before. The post-war promise gave way to industrial strikes, electricity cuts, and civil unrest by the mid-1970s. The oil crisis drove up food costs as economic recession gripped Britain. Doctors and media outlets preached against fatty, high-calorie meals, warning people off the very dishes which had sustained Britons through two world wars. In many households, packaged cereals like Special K, cornflakes, and instant oatmeal replaced the traditional English breakfast, endorsed through commercials as quick, affordable morning fuel. Yet the dire state of 1970s Britain also revived appreciation for tradition and sparked pride in the nation's cultural heritage. Like the wartime generation before them, 1970s Brits facing economic crisis and societal enemy found comfort and familiarity in the enduring full breakfast. 
Local cafes, chippies, pubs, and diners saw renewed popularity as community centers where people gathered to chat, dine, and reaffirm their sense of British identity. By the 21st century, the beloved full breakfast had endured war, famine, food fads, health warnings, and changing tastes over five centuries of British life. It remained an iconic national dish, retaining its cultural importance through the flexibility of ingredients and meaning. The hearty fare is served daily in hotel chains and cozy cafes across modern Britain. It features prominently on pub menus and roadside diners from London to Yorkshire. For locals and tourists alike, the full English conjures nostalgia for Britain's agrarian past and anchors cultural identity in the ever-shifting tides of contemporary society. The full English breakfast has endured over five centuries as a distinctive national cuisine. This meal continues gracing British tables today, just as in eras past, sustaining diners with familiar salty, savory flavors through changing generations. As long as baked beans, sliced tomato, and pork links hold meaning for the English people, the enduring institution of the full breakfast will link 21st century Britons to the land and culinary heritage entwined with their identity. Though the pace of modern life accelerates, the full English breakfast persists as a steadfast tradition connecting the present to the past across Britain's tables.